So, so tonight, Jesus is going to heal a blind man in John chapter 9. And I, I actually, this is one of, healing the blind is one of my favorite miracles that Jesus does. I think even above raising the dead, believe it or not, because before we can see spiritually, we are dead. This is the issue. And, um, and I'm going to teach that the, the healing the blind was massively significant, not only in prophecy, but in Jesus' ministry. It was his most common miracle, actually. And there's a reason for this. Um, Jesus came to answer two questions to, to, for humanity. Anyone who reads the Gospels, there's always two questions in all the four Gospels that the reader is challenged to see. And one is who Jesus is. And, and the answer is he's the son of God. He's equal to God in deity, and he is God. And he's, the word became flesh. He's the incarnation of God himself. That is the first truth, uh, that the, the, uh, the unsaved world cannot see unless the Holy Spirit lifts that blindness. And then after that, the second question that Jesus came to answer for us is why he came. So, and he came to save us from our sins, to give us eternal life, through his sacrifices, atoning substitutionary sacrifice on the cross. And that, and that he died, but also rose again. So he defeated death. He's the only man that ever actually rose from the dead. And, and this then has such documented evidence of this. So those are the two questions. And this is why we need to be only a spiritually awake person uh, can actually understand those truths. And once those truths become revealed, the entire Bible opens up like a living uh, organism. It, it will become alive when someone accepts Jesus as God in faith, as their Savior, and chooses to follow him. And um, and before we become spiritually uh, are able to see, we can't even see the kingdoms, the kingdom of Satan or the kingdom of God. We have no, the people have no conception of the spiritual world, not even Satan's world, really, without, without being awakened. Um, and, uh, and, and spiritual truths. When some people, when they read the Bible, they can't understand it, or they'll, they'll get completely wildly inaccurate interpretations. Um, the Holy Spirit promises, one of the, the great gifts of the Holy Spirit is to give us spiritual discernment. So this is actually a, a gift. Uh, the Bible will not be understandable to people who have not been saved, typically. They might understand it intellectually, um, but they'll argue about theology, etc. Um, this is why we need to be spiritually awake. And, and another thing that spiritual blindness prevents is the recognition of our sinful hearts um, and this is the key you you cannot come to jesus in saving faith without recognizing your need due to the sin that you cannot overcome yourself if you don't recognize that you have a sinful heart and that that, that you need forgiveness for that sin then you're spiritually blind and uh, and i'm hoping that tonight's class will awaken you to that need of, of yours this is soul need for eternal life. And at some point you're going to reckon with God in his judgment. And he's going to look at that sin of yours that you've committed all your life. Um, and, and you're going to have to answer for that. And what are you going to answer? If you don't have uh, the, the blood that was shed of that cross covering you, God says you are condemned and you will uh, not be written in the Lamb's book of life and you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will go to hell. So we need to be awake. We need to awaken our friends. We need to awaken if you're not saved, you need to be awake yourself tonight. Um, and I think the other thing that's going to uh, be revealed when we when we become spiritually awake is is love. Uh, everybody's looking for love in all the wrong places, as the old saying goes. Um, you will never know the true meaning of God's love until your spiritually your spiritual blindness has been lifted. It'll just be an academic exercise to you. Once you can sing the song "Amazing Grace" and feel the meaning in your heart and come to your knees with tears, you will never understand what love is. And I think everybody wants to know what love is, true love, indescribable love. This is what we're talking about. Um, and, I, and I would say another thing that we get when we become spiritually awake is we understand the fear of God. Um, and we also understand his need for, his requirement for righteousness and justice. That becomes real when, we, when we're saved because we realize the, the sinfulness of our hearts and how how it is offends a holy God. And, um, and I think, uh, last of all, I think it creates an awareness of eternity. Uh, the unsaved world, you can ask them, where do you think you're going to go when you're dying? And they just have no care at all. They, they think they're going to be reincarnated or they just don't care. Well, when, when your spiritual blindness is, is lifted, you become very aware of that and you become very aware of heaven and hell. 
and eternity with Jesus. So these are some of the things that was why we need our spiritual mind that's lifted. And, and if you're unsaved and all these things I just said to you make no sense and you have no appreciation for it, then I would say, listen on, because this will hopefully uh, supernaturally lift your blindness. And is a picture of a spiritually blind man who has no capacity to see Jesus. The blind man is helpless and at the mercy of someone who chooses to help him. He is like the sinner. God has to take the initiative. And this is about, uh, about God's grace. We're lost, dead, blind, and God sees us. He comes in compassion, grace, and gives spiritual light or sight. Um, so all of Jesus' miracles, as, as you, you will learn through this, these courses, always have a spiritual meaning. They're not just miracles for miracles' sake. There's a teaching always involved in it. And the teaching is generally always salvation related. Uh, always remember that. Uh, Jesus always did miracles to either validate what he was saying or to actually show a symbol of salvation itself, which in this case he was doing. Um, now, the Gospels record more cases of blind people being healed than any other specific ailment. There were no healing of blind people in the Old Testament, not until Jesus did it. And here's a little summary of Jesus' miracles in terms of uh, ailments. Uh, there was one healing of a deaf mute. There was one healing with palsy. There was one healing of someone with a fever. There's two healings of lepers. There's three people raised from the dead, but there are five separate accounts of blind people being given sight. Um, so you can see just by that, the emphasis that Jesus put on this particular miracle. And there's a reason why, because it was prophesied. This was a messianic sign. And here's a few verses that I'll, I'll just read to you quickly to, to show why this is so significant. Isaiah 29, 18, it says, In that day the deaf shall hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. Isaiah 35, 5, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Isaiah 42, 7 says, To open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison those who sit in darkness from the prison house. In Matthew 11, 4 and 5, Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John, John the Baptist, the things which you see and hear, the blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. So you can see um, it's all through the scriptures that the Messiah, this was one of the key signs that he would do was open the eyes of the blind. So now we're going to get into the, um, the speaking of, teaching of spiritual blindness, which I opened with. So throughout the whole Bible, blindness is used metaphorically to represent the human condition of fallenness, spiritual ignorance, and the inability to comprehend God in divine truth. All people are naturally spiritually blind and living in darkness until they believe and see the light of Jesus. God came to give sight to the blind. Now, there's three kinds of blindness that the Bible talks about. There's natural blindness, which is uh, due to our, our damaged nature of the unsaved man. We, we've talked about this in the, uh, the fall of man and the spiritual warfare class. If you want to go to that one, to, if you want more information on it. And there's also a second type of blindness. And this is Satan's. Uh, Satan can also blind us. And I call this Satan's double dose. So if our, if our fallen nature in our, wasn't enough blindness, Satan comes along and even uh, attacks people who are starting to get the gospel with even more uh, blindness. And then thirdly, God actually bl uh, bl has blindness as a judgment to those who persistently reject the light. So isn't this interesting? Three levels of blindness. Uh, we're going to go through this now. So the natural blindness. This is the Adamic nature of the unsaved man. Let's hear what, um, what scripture has to say. First Corinthians. But the natural man... That's the unsaved man, as the natural man Paul's referring to, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So you see that? The unsaved person, Paul's saying, they cannot know these spiritual truths. God won't let them. This is why Jesus spoke in parables, to keep it all a mystery to the, un, to the unbelievers. Psalm 82.5 David said, they do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. John 3, 19, Jesus said, and this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. In John 8, 12, 
It says, then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So spiritual blindness, there's a natural Adamic nature that we're all born into. Everyone walking around this planet right now that doesn't believe in Jesus is walking in darkness. And they're in the kingdom of Satan, and they, they know nothing of the spiritual truths of God. This is what this is teaching. And uh, people will argue about this, but it doesn't matter if they argue. Just preach the gospel to them. The only way you can open their eyes is through the gospel. So Satan's double dose of blindness. What does this mean? This is, this is pretty fascinating stuff. I, um, you know, it took me a few years to come to an appreciation of, of Satan and God's participation in blindness. And, and, but you will find it in scripture. Here we go. Um, so this is when people are trying to see the light, when someone's preaching the gospel to them, for instance. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age, which is Satan, has blinded who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So here we see the, the God of this age is actually he's going out of his way to blind people who are trying to see, but, but the gospel is veiled. Now in Mark 4, the parable of the sower, Jesus says, the sower sows the word, the word of God, the gospel. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear it, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that is sown in their hearts. So we, we see it now from Jesus and from the Apostle Paul demonstrating this principle that Satan can actually come in and just add even more blindness to their already blind state. Now, God uh, has blindness as a judgment and uh, to those who are persistently rejecting the light. Um, and th this leads into hard heartedness, which we're going to discuss in a minute, too. But John 12, 36, 40, it says, therefore, they could not believe because Isaiah said he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts in turn so that I should heal them. So here Jesus is saying that, that he has blinded, that's God. God has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts. We see that with Pharaoh and we see it all in uh, various parts of scripture where he does this. In Isaiah 44, 18, they know nothing, they understand nothing, their eyes are plastered over so they cannot see, and their minds closed so they cannot understand. Mark 4, 11 to 12, Jesus says, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are on the outside, the unbelievers, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven. So this is an actual judgment, Jesus is saying. If you reject the gospel, Jesus says you're on the outside and, and the parables, you won't be able to, you'll, you'll hear the parables, but you'll never understand the deep spiritual meaning behind them. I've watched unbelievers try and interpret parables and it's absolutely, it's almost humorous how far off they will go. They will spiritualize things to such ridiculous extent. You would think, are you even, you're not even being rational. Like, but they just can't see. This principle reveals itself when you start to look for it. Um, Mark 4, 4.25, this, uh, this verse is also relevant. Jesus says, whoever has will be given more, but whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And this is in the context of, of, of the parable of the sower and the sowing of the word. So if you have the word and you study the word, he says, he's going to reveal more to you. But if you, if you have the word, if you, if you call yourself a Christian and you don't read the Bible, you never read it, just hear the odd sermon. God says, what, I, what little you did have maybe at one time, I'm going to take it from you. <laughs> That's a judgment. Um, so here's a question for you. Why don't, why don't many things in the world make sense to people? Why are people so confused about everything, it seems like? Um, and why do so many people refuse to believe in Jesus, the gospel and the Bible? It's uh, like people just so many will they just don't want to even entertain. Well, here's some reasons why. The parable of the sower is really the go-to place for this. Um, but some other topics before we do, I'm going to go back to the parable of the sower in a second. Is spiritual blindness, which we just talked about, and uh, hard-heartedness, which is closely related to spiritual blindness, but slightly different. We're going to talk about that next. And then um, suppressing the truth of God. Romans 1 talks about those who suppress the truth, God will actually hand them over to, to Satan. And 
and he will eventually abandon them, which is a judgment of God too. So if you, if you continually reject God, it'll harden your heart and actually he will abandon you. He will, he will not reveal the truth. And in John 3, 19, which we just read, really Jesus um, said it in, in final in finality here, the evil deeds they do, uh, evil deeds hate the light and people don't want the light because they love their evil deeds. They love their sin. And this will keep them from seeing the truth. Um, I'm going to actually uh, show you uh, a little video, three minutes on the parable of the sower. I'm not going to do a full teaching. Hard heartedness, I said, is one of the other reasons uh, why people will not, will be spiritually blind. It's a source of spiritual blindness. Now, this is about sin. Okay. This is um, sin causes the heart to grow hard, especially continual and unrepentant sin, such as pride and unforgiveness. Um, now, if we relentlessly continue to engage in sin, there will come a time when God will give us over to our debased mind and let it have let us have it our way. Now, this hard heartedness can apply both to the unsaved and to the saved. Even even Christians can can become hard hearted if they continually sin and do not confess their sin. Uh, they're not going to lose their salvation necessarily, but they're not going to experience um, the filling of the Holy Spirit. They're not going to be effective. In evangelism, uh, they're not going to be living in the in that spiritual promised land, which I often mention, um, and and that's why I said unconfessed sin is is probably the root cause for most Christians not being filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, so the cure for a hardened heart is that we recognize the effect that this spiritual disease has on us. If we're unsaved, we have to admit that we're sinners in need of forgiveness. Um, God will help us to see our heart's condition when we ask Him, "Search me, O God, and know my heart. See if there is any offensive way in me." and lead me to the way everlasting. Um, so I would recommend Christian do that, say that Psalm and that in their morning prayer and, and make sure that there, if there's sin in your heart, that so you're asking God to reveal it to you and asking for forgiveness. Um, this may sound too easy almost, or maybe you maybe you think, well, I'm, I've already been forgiven once at the cross, I don't need to do that. Actually, the scripture teaches you do need to do this. And um, if you stay uh, in other classes, you'll you'll get. I, I teach much more thoroughly on this, even as we go into John. But, so sin alienates us from God, and since we're all sinners, we are all alienated from God uh, before we're saved. Not because He rejects us, but because we reject Him. Unless God Himself takes the initiative to reconcile us, we remain helpless with no future beyond death. And that's exactly what He's done with Jesus Christ. He sent Jesus to help us. And Jesus taught that stubborn, hard-hearted people cannot understand the things of the kingdom of God, even when they are taught in the plainest possible language. It takes a new heart and only a heart that God can give. So, so th this is where I, I started this lesson. It doesn't matter how clearly you explain uh, certain aspects of why the Bible is ancient and real and there's so many thousand manuscripts and why and all these reasons why sp you know, spiritual theology uh, means what it means. Uh, people won't understand it uh, if if they if their heart is not renewed. It needs to be regenerated. We're, we're not, um, and that that is a new birth that's required. That was what we learned in John three, is that um, we need to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and what He did on the cross. And that simple act of faith will will open your eyes to understanding all these truths that we're teaching tonight. So in the Old Testament, Ezekiel and Jeremiah prophesied.